Israel was taken out of bondage. How many glad you're out of bondage this Amen. morning? Praise Amen. God. Amen. God was taken yeah. through the wilderness and everything. Yeah. Now the Bible says that the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me to this mount and be there, and I will give thee the tables of stone, which is the Ten Commandments, and the law and the commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua, and Moses went unto the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Turn ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Ur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of the Lord abode upon the Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now, church, God called him out of the cloud. Now, but Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 through 9. Now, I'm bringing out a point. I may be doing a little reading this morning, but I'm going to bring out a point. Amen. Now, remember, the Bible says, Moses said, I'm going to go up to the mountain, and I'll give you an errand, an errand, and I will come back. Amen. God, Moses had made a promise to the children of Israel that he was coming back, okay? Now, Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 through 9. And when the people saw Moses, that Moses did delay to come down out of the mountain. Now, this is really important. Now, church, as you look at Exodus 32, verse 1. It says that when Moses, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And he said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for Moses, this man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we will not what is become of him. Now, as, many, as long as they've been with Moses, as, as, and as many times Moses has spoke to them and showed them that, that God was with them and everything, they would already begin to lose their faith in Moses. They didn't know where he was at, but all they had to do was stand on the promise that Moses gave them. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, the Bible tells us that in verse 2, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with engraving tools. After he had made it a mold calf, and they said, These be the gods of Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before him, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace, peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Verse 7 says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Could you imagine how fast they turned away because Moses had delayed his coming? Church, we're living in a time right now that we need to take a look at what was said here because now I know Moses was a great man. In fact, the Bible says he was a great man. Now I thank God this morning we got a greater man than that, his, that man is called Jesus. Amen. Amen. But here we realize that the children of Israel, now Aaron was a priest. Aaron was right, right beside of Moses. All the time, yet he left Moses and Aaron in charge of the people, and they should have enough backbones and enough grit about them. When the people came to them, he should right there and hush them up and told them, Moses will be back because Moses said he would be back, and yeah. you just go about your business, believing and trusting God, because Moses will, amen, come back. But instead of standing up, that's what's the matter with a lot of preachers and pastors and churches and nature's is they don't have no backbone. Can I hear an amen? amen? And they need to tell the people things that they need to be uh, need to be yeah. told and, and encourage them, amen. Yeah. What God says, God will do. Amen. What Moses said, he had proved many times to them that what he said he would come to pass. Yeah. Amen. And so church that took the children of Israel would, would actually lead us astray because of error. And because of her. But the Bible tells us in that it says in uh, verse uh, verse 8, 
They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped to him, have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be the gods of Israel, which has brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. They, they, their neck was stiff, and they was always in a place, amen, that they was always losing their doubt and losing their faith, amen, in God. So many times God had to speak to them, show them, and all the miracles, now would you imagine all the miracles and all yeah. the things, amen, that God does to Moses, and yeah. how God does so many great miracles and everything, and how Moses, when he began to talk to the people and think that when his, his words didn't either would fall to the ground. Now, church, I'm going to preach this morning because God kind of showed me that yesterday. Too many people are turning away from God. Yeah. Now, church, there's a reason why so many Christian people are turning away from God. As we look at Moses and we look at Aaron and Aaron, look at the children of Israel, do you realize the reason why they lost their faith and everything and it go by the way, went by the wayside yeah. is because Moses delayed his coming. Yeah. Now, church, this is the same thing that happened to the churches today. It's because church Jesus, amen, when he left, they told the, the disciples, to, amen, to build the church, to go to the upper room, get the receipt, fill with the Holy Ghost, and begin to build the churches and things, amen, that he wanted them to have. And the Bible says that, that when God was speaking to, Jesus was speaking to the disciples, the Bible says that as, as he was speaking, the Bible says that God took him up, amen, in the spirit, and up into the clouds. Now, church, let me tell you something. Jesus has went, as we look in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 11. Now, Jesus was taken up, amen, to the clouds of glory, praise God, amen, but he promised, amen, he was going to come back. He promised them a church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. See, Jesus was going to have him a church. He was going to be part of that church. In fact, yeah. Jesus is the head of that yeah. church. Tonight. Yeah. He's the head of this church. church. But what I'm bringing out this morning, amen, is because the, the, Jesus has delayed his coming, we have the same thing happen as was happened, amen, to Moses and the children of Israel yeah. in the wilderness. It's because Moses, the Delayed his coming. Even though he said he was coming back, they lost faith in Abraham or Moses and they left lost faith in God. Church were losing a lot of people today are losing their faith in Jesus. Amen. In God is because Jesus has delayed his coming. Now Jesus said he was coming back. The angels promised the disciples he's coming back. He God and Jesus promised us he was coming back. Can I hear an amen? amen. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 7. It says, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time of the season which the Father has put in his own power. See, Jesus said it's not, it's, it's not good for us to know the time and the season. Amen. Because church, we always got to be watching and praying that Jesus said he was coming back. And we got to be watching and praying for his coming back. Can I hear an amen? amen. But yet so many Christians and so many church people today are losing their faith and having doubt in God. Amen. And going along with the, 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 the scriptures and said, where is his coming? Now church, we've got to stand on the promises of God. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. And he said, says he's coming back, he will come back. All we got to do is be ready, watching and praying. Now verse 8 said, but you shall receive the power uh, after the Holy Ghost to come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood, amen, by them, amen, and while appeared, we said unto you, then said unto them, you men of Galilee. He said, uh, you men, why stand you gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus was taken up from you unto heaven, shall come in my manner as you have seen him, amen, go into heaven. Church, let me tell you something, church, I believe with all my heart, just, uh, we got to realize, church, that when Jesus made a promise to us, amen, he, he made a promise to the disciples. He said, I'm going to go away because I'm going to go be, be, prepare you a place, amen. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself, and where I am there you may be also. But today, see, my, 
God's people, the church, amen, are losing, have losing their faith in Jesus and his promises and because they're, he, they are delaying his time in church. I'm here to tell you, we, we've got to realize according to the scriptures and everything that a thousand years to Jesus is just like one day. Amen. And church, I want you to know, praise God, I, I'm going to Try my best, amen, to be ready and to be watching and to be praying. And that's what we need to do, church. And by the grace of God, when Jesus comes back, he's going to take us with him. The church, just like the children of Israel back in the wilderness there, amen, they lost them out in faith. And I believe it's time for the preachers and the pastors and the ministers and, and people stand up, amen, and believe God and trust God and encourage people that when Jesus said he's coming back, amen. and he's coming back, but most of Oh, we got to live, amen, like he's coming back. So many Christian people in church today are not living, amen, the way that we ought to be living because we're not sure, amen, and living the way God wants us to live, that Jesus is coming back and that we got to be ready, church. Can I hear an amen? Jesus is coming back. Oh, what a, what a, what a joy that is, glory to God. Now, many today are losing uh, faith in God in the churches. First, next thing is that they're, they're ignorant of the scriptures. Now, the scriptures is the word of God. Amen. Moses, the babe, went to the, up to the mount and gave them the Ten Commandments, the word of God, and he was bringing back the word of God to them. But church, me tell you something, like I said, Moses was just like Jesus. In other words, he, he was the uh, one that's uh, higher up as, as Jesus was, but he was like unto Jesus, amen. And church, he proved so many times to the children of Israel that what he said, God was going to back it up. Thank God, church, what Jesus said, God is going to back it up, amen. and we can believe Jesus when he said he's coming back. They yeah. doubted Jesus or, or Moses, and they got in trouble, and church, they begin to build them a God. Too many church people that are building their gods on everything else. Can I hear an amen? amen. Just like the church is today. Now, church, let me tell you something. I, I know, I, I, would, I, I, I used to love sports. I don't miss any kind of sports anymore. It's because, I tell you, it's causing the church, amen, to backslide. It's causing God's church people to, that that's an idol, and they'd rather they may sit there and watch that ball game or go to that ball game, just like that was some on sixty some thousand probably more watching that. They probably watched it last night, and they're probably watching today. And they don't even think about coming to church. Who are they showing their people? Are they showing their neighbors? Are they showing their children? Their children, Amen. That God is more important, Amen. Than that, that, that football or that baseball. The Bible said that in the last days there will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I mean, sports are okay. I can remember so, so many times, poor little old brother Charlie Ford, when he got saved, that man loved sports. He still loves sports today. And I tell you, church, we had a time with him. You know what? We just kept praying for him and lifted him up. And, and but I tell you, what, on the Sunday was when the championship playing and thing. If you weren't careful, he was going to miss, amen. But after a while, he got the Holy Ghost in him and he got the love of God in him. And you know what he does? He went and bought him, I guess, a tape or a tape recorder, whatever it was, and began to tape the games. Now you couldn't hardly get him to miss the church. I'm here to tell you, church, God has given us all kinds of blessings. Yeah. If you love sports, he makes a way that you can listen to it and watch it. But you got to make a way to come to church because you are a witness, yeah. amen, to a lost and dying world. And show the world that you love Jesus more than you love the world. Yeah. Can I hear that, amen? Yeah. A lot of people there are missing church. Right. And because of history, because of they, because that's sports. Right. And they say they love God. They're telling their children they love God. Something ain't right, church. Right. Amen. Amen. That's where, but the Bible said the churches anymore are ignorant. Now, we can't get people to come to church anymore at all. The Bible said the last day they come a great falling away. And church, they're falling away. And they wonder why they've lost their joy and lost their peace and everything. And their, and their strength with God is because church, they, they, they're, 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 they're listening to the devil. And, and instead of listening to God and reading the scriptures, Jesus said you do not you use your power and your strength is because you know not the scriptures. That's what the Bible said. In Mark chapter 12, verse 24, as we look into Mark chapter 20, 12, 24, it said, do you, do you not therefore err, because you know not the scripture nor the power of God. Church, we need to know the scriptures today. We need to know the power of God today. Can I hear an amen? amen. And church, if we don't know the scripture and the power of God, the devil is going to get the best of us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Right. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, but beloved, be not ignorant, 
For neither be unaware or unafford. Amen. Now this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. A thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. God is not slack. Moses, amen, was up on the mount and he was there for a purpose and a reason that he was going to bring the laws, amen, to the children of Israel that God could bless them and be with them and cause them to be overcomers. But because Moses delayed his coming, the man, the people turned away from God and turned away from Moses, amen, and began to build their gods in their lives. People are building gods in their lives. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church? We've got to get those gods out of our life and get Jesus and the Holy Ghost back in life that we can glorify God. Can I hear an amen? amen. See, they, they, they're loving the, the world and the cures of the world more than they are of God. The Bible says the last day to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yeah. And church, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I don't thought the church, one of one, the church will not save you. Uh, there was one preacher I think said that the reason why he don't preach about the church so much is because uh, you let people believe that you go to church you're saved. No, the church won't save you. The church is for the saved, amen, and the sickly, well, they can get saved and get healed and get delivered. The church is, the, amen, is to keep us from backsliding. Now, here they amen. So if you want to backslide, just stay out of the church, amen, and the, and the world will take care of you. I said the world will take care of you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Yeah. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and that's what it is. Oh, I love my sports. And I love it. Amen. I mean, people were jumping up and down and shouting everything when they when that quarterback threw that ball or, or when they intercepted that ball. I, I watched about 13, probably 12, 15 minutes of the last. And uh, it is really, I just wanted to see what was going on. And I saw all them people and everything laughing and shouting, jumping up, down, and everything else. Amen. But when they come to church, if they do come to church, okay? <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for letting my team win. I pray with my team yeah, win. Are you, are you, this is what I'm saying, church. I'm not, I'm not totally humorous, but that's what they're doing. They're letting God, amen, live in their lives, church. And church, let me tell you something, God is not pleased with it. Can I hear an amen? amen. For, Bible, for all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He is not of the Father, but he's of the world. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, church, I know this is kind of hard to preach. I'm preaching all to you, but I'm preaching to those out there. Yeah, Preachers need to have a backbone. If, if Aaron and Ur would have stood up, amen, had a backbone about them and told the people, just keep that out of your mind and everything, he yeah. will come back. You just go back and do what God told you to do and yeah. obey him and everything, and everything's going to be all right. We need to tell the church people as well as sinners, Hey, are, this is what I'm saying. We need to, amen, not trying to build another God or have another God, but we need to get God in our life. Can I hear me? Amen. And believe in God and trust in God and get ourselves out of this world because, church, this world is on its way downward. Yeah. And one day this whole world is going to be dissolved and nothing's yeah. going to be in it before. But God is coming back, glory to God, amen. and setting up everything. A new world. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be a brand new world, yeah. glory to God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 34, and take heed to yourself. Now, God is telling us Christians. Luke chapter tw uh, 21 verse 34. See, we need, to, we need to listen to what Jesus says here. He said, what it says, Behold, take heed to yourselves. At least any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drugs and cures of this life. Church, we shouldn't have to worry about the cures of this life. We should have, our minds should be on heaven. We, we are heavenly people. Amen. We're, we should be talking, thinking about heavenly places, church, and we should be looking at the Jesus instead of looking for the world. I know he put us in the world. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if God saved us and just zapped us out and took us to heaven? All the troubles and the heartaches and the lies would be all over it. But he left us here that we could be a witness, amen, and lift up the name of Jesus and be a witness to Jesus and get the gods out of our life that people know who, who to come to. Can I hear an amen? amen. So wrapped up in the world anymore. We don't have time for God. I mean, God, oh, God has blessed me. I love 
$250,000 home. I got a big cow wagon. I mean, I got money in my pocket. Oh, God, it blessed me. How can God bless you when you don't even come to church to worship him and everything? And spend every dime you got. Don't pay your tithes. Can I hear an amen? amen. They, they give it everything to the devil, but they, they won't even pay their tithes or nothing to God. Amen. 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 You guys start paying your tithes to some people. God's going to cause his blessing to leave you. Right. Amen. Amen. That's what God says. I didn't say it, God said it. Right. And he said that, that what it says. And he said, Anytime your hearts be old, charm with suffering and drunk and secure for this life. And so that day come upon you on the For as a snare, it shall come up on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always that you be accounted worthy to escape all these things which shall come and then to pass and stand before the Lord. Now, church, let me tell you something. Moses, amen, had, had taught his people well. He taught them the word of God and taught them how, how God was in his life and everything. And like I said, his word never fell to the ground. What the Moses said, God will accomplish it. Yeah. And Moses said, if you read your scripture, he said, I will come back. That's all the children of Israel. That's all error. And that's all error needed to do. Amen. They were the priests. They were the head of those children of Israel. And they should have had some backbone about them. Just like the church is today. Amen. Because I'm here to tell you, church, the church world is in trouble because, amen, we got some Mickey Mouse yeah. preachers and pastors who want to, want to just the, amen, the, uh, what do you call it? The, just the, let the people lead them, in other words. The pastor is called to lead the people. The people are not called to lead the pastor. Can yeah. I hear an amen? The Bible says that in the last days that they'll heat themselves to pastors or ministers or teachers. Amen. To hear what they you, you, yeah. you preach what I want you to hear you preach. You do what I tell you to preach and everything. But church, let me tell you, if I have to come to amen to the house of God and preach what you want to hear, this old boy is leaving. Amen. 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 Because I'm going to obey God. Yeah. Amen. 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 So take heed of yourself. And I love that. Praise God. Now the Bible tells us in closing this morning. Well, the Bible says in Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64 verse 4 and 5. For the sense of the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear of you have, have the eye seen. O God, besides thee, that, that he that hath prepared for him, that waited for him. We've got to wait for God, church. The children of Israel failed the Moses and failed God is because they failed to wait upon Moses. Moses said he'll be back. So as we look into Isaiah 64, verse 4 and 5, it tells us God has prepared a place for us. Amen. Our eyes and everything else have not seen. Yeah. Amen. For those that wait upon him, church, Jesus is coming back. Yeah. I said Jesus is coming back. Well, glory, Jesus is coming yeah. back. All we got to do is watch and pray, and you've got good things in store for us, church. Amen. 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 The Bible says, wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. Yes. And he shall strengthen thy heart, wait I say unto the Lord. Now, church, our churches are turning away, our people are turning away from the church. And I tell you, church, the devil and, and the world has accomplished something. It will take God to tarry. It will take years. Unless God moves in a mighty way yeah. to get people back to God in churches. Amen. They think that they can stay home. Amen. I think, I thank God for some of those preachers on the Amen. The nurse folks thing. But that is not your church. I said, that is not your church. People yeah. are, are going and, and right in the end. You know, John Jimmy Swider church, that's all right. Amen. But I tell you one thing, don't call me to preach a funeral or nothing. Sir. Amen. Because when you're tithes and offerings and everything else going, you let, you let him. And you know what he said? He don't have time to preach your funeral. Amen. 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 Joel asked Olsen, he don't have time to preach your funeral. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church? God gave us a church that we can worship him. And we can grow, glory to God. And that's why he said not to forsake ourselves in the assembly of God. I know people in the hospitals and stuff like that can't come. The church people that can't come and, and turn that television on and watch about 30 minutes of some ungodly preacher and don't have no backbone or nothing. And, and he, he's dwelling on those kind of people, amen, because he said, I've got them. I've got them. Yeah. Amen. 
But God give us a church. The Bible says in Exodus 25, I wrote this down. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, uh, yeah, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. You should you should under, underline that and mark it because he told the children of Israel in the wilderness. He said, I want you to build me a sanctuary, which is a church. He said, I want you to build me a church that I can dwell among you. Amen. See, God dwells in the bottom of the church, church. Yeah. He said, this word, amen, he come, that we can have some fellowship with him. Yeah. And I, you can have fellowship. It, it, some people say, well, I can serve God out there on the lake. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes, you can serve God on the lake, but ain't what God says. Yeah. Amen. On Sundays, you need to be in church. Yeah. Well, brother, my goodness, that's the only time I can go. Well, though my lust is better than I am. Right. Amen. There's other days. Or there's after church, whatever. But the Bible tells us. Some don't give. This is the sad part I'm, I'm going to bring in. Some churches or some, some people don't even. I talk about Christians now. Some people don't even have a home church for themselves or for their children. Can you believe that? They don't even have a church for themselves or for their children. How do you expect your children to come to church and get saved if you don't have a church? Right. If you don't believe in amen, coming to fellowship. The Bible tells us in Hebrews yeah. chapter, uh, I want to make sure I get it right. In Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verse 21 through 25, Tells us not to forsake the seed of our house. See, Jesus is the high priest over the house of God. When we come to church and worship God, he's our high priest over us. And that's where we get our healing, we get our deliverance, we get our answer, we get our encouragement, we get our blessing because he's up there, amen, being the, old, the high priest, get, receiving that our blessing, come and, rec and we can receive them everything. But church, when we don't come to church, we, we not obeying God. Yeah. And therefore, Jesus can't help us like he wants to help us. Yeah. Amen. 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 It's amazing. Where do you go to church at? Well, I don't go to church no where's hard. I just go here and there. Mm -hmm. I just I just breaks my heart. Yeah. Have you ever seen people like it? Oh. I don't go to church. I don't have a home church. I don't believe in a home church. Yeah. All they want you is your, your money and everything else. No, all they want you to do is come in and get saved right. and come in and, and, and do things for God. Amen. Right. Yeah. That's a this excuse not to come to church, it's excuse not to pay your tithes. Right. Can I hear it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's true, church. Amen. Right. Psalms uh, chapter 77, verse 13 says, when we, when we go when we go to church, we, we go to lean on God, to go God's way. Amen. David recognized when he came to church, he was going God's way. He learned of God. Amen. We got to learn of God. The only to learn of God is to come to church. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, he built, he, he built us a church. If God didn't build us a church, it'd be okay, but he did. And he put in those churches uh, uh, pastors and ministers and teachers, uh, prophets, apostles. He put all these in the church that we may learn and we not we not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Church people are losing out. Church people are losing out on God is because Jesus is delaying His coming. He's not delaying His coming. God has got out before the Lord. He's got a set time. Amen. And he goes, look at you and say, come go get your bride. Amen. Just as Moses went up, he was going to come back. Just as Jesus come back, going up, he's going to come back. We need to be ready. We need to be worshipers of God. Not for everything in this world. Have idols. First, we've got so many people, we've got so many idols. And, and, and they think they're blessed and everything. They, they put God, they don't put God first. He's second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. He's God. He, I got him in. I got him. I got him. I got him in my life. No, if you don't have God first, you don't have him in your life. Amen. Amen. I mean, I know this is kind of a part of preaching, but you know what? Churches are losing out, and they're and they're giving up. Amen. On God. Yes, they could. That whole the, the Bible teaches there that that all them people that was there. Uh, Worship the Bible. Thousands and thousands God had to get rid of. Yeah. Because they build a they build a gold tent. And you know what the, you know what the preacher said, the pastor said? Well, I couldn't help it. You know, he built the calf and everything else. He said, 
the, 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 the goat calf just popped up out of the fire out of nowhere. Did you believe that? Read it. He told Moses, well, Moses, I couldn't help it. Yeah. You know these are stiff-necked people? But I just, I, well, I know, just throw the goat in the fire. Yeah. And, and the goat calf raised up. Could you believe that? Moses didn't believe it either. He beat that calf up into five pieces and threw it in the water and made them drink it. But still, God, they put a curse on their lives. Would you stand this morning, church?